Hello YouTube, today we're going to be doing an example on Green's Theorem involving circulation and flux. So, if you have this vector field here as given, um, and it gives you the bounds, it's going to be asking for the circulation and flux of the system. Remember, this is a field, a vector field. Um, so, we're going to be using Green's Theorem to uh, figure out circulation and flux. Now, remember, circulation is kind of like, is the uh, graph or supposedly rotating itself? And flux mean or circulation is counterclockwise rotation or counterclockwise rotation. So the question is, is it rotating? And flux is, is there um, like something? Is there something flowing in or out of the field um, in the case? So that's what we're going to be calculating, and we're going to use the Green's theorem as a method of calculating that. So flux um, is given um, using this formula for Green's theorem. Um, and then the circulation is given by this formula. Just notice the differences. Um, I guess flux has the positive sign, circulation has a subtraction sign. There's another variation of the Green's theorem, but we're going to be using this one for the following example. And notice um, that the partial m and partial n's are uh, also switched when adding or subtracting. So, what is m and n? Well, you have to define that. So m is going to be negative sine y, which is simply the component in front of the i vector, or i component of the vector, and the n is going to be the j component of the vector. Um, so you simply define those and set up your partial derivatives. So partial m with respect to x, that's going to be zero because you're treating y as a constant, so the derivative of a constant is zero. Next we have the partial derivative of m with respect to y, so the derivative of sine. Um, a negative sign would be negative cosine. Then you take the partial derivative of n with respect to x, and that will be cosine y, because cosine y is treated as a constant. Like if that were 3x, then the 3 would come out. Um, then well, finally we have partial n with partial y, and that would simply be uh, negative x sine y, since the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and the constant stays attached. Okay, so now that we have that set up, let's start with circulation. Uh, I just picked one. So we're going to figure out if this system is rotating counterclockwise or not, or just how fast or whatever. So we're going to be using these, this method to figure it out. So um, simply by plugging in uh, the, um, what we defined in the, the formula, uh, we will get this here. So partial n partial x is cosine y minus partial n partial y, which is negative cosine y. Uh, we can simplify that to 2 cosine y. Um, and the bounds were given from x equals pi over 2 to y equals pi over 2. So it's going to be from 0 to pi over 2, y pi over 2, um, 0 to pi over 2, 0 to pi over 2 again. Um, and you can define your variables as dy dx or dx dy. I specifically did dx dy because you can see that the integration will be easier. You can do either uh, way in this case. Um, so you take the antiderivative of cosine 2 cosine y with respect to x. So just pretend that's a constant and it would just be 2x cosine y. So it's like you're saying, what's the antiderivative of 3? It'd be 3x. Um, so that's what you would, how you, you would see it better that way. Um, then you can evaluate that integral. Um, and you get pi cosine y. And then you take the antiderivative of this with respect to y again. Or not again, but with respect to y. Um, and you get pi sine y, evaluated from pi over 2 to 0. And then simply do that, and you get pi. So what does that mean? Well, it means that it's rotating counterclockwise. Um, a positive number means counterclockwise. If we got a negative pi, for example, that'd be rotating um, clockwise instead. Okay, so there's that. Now we're going to do flux. So flux, using the formula from Green's theorem and using what we previously defined in this little um, thinking cloud, I guess, and this first part of the slide, uh, we're just going to simply plug in what we know. Um, so partial m partial x is 0, and then partial n partial y is negative x sine y. Then I'm going to do dx dy again since we already did it like that, or since we um, kind of did that that way last time, so I'm going to be consistent. Um, so then take the antiderivative of negative x sine y, and you get x squared over 2, that's a negative number, times sine y. So just like saying what's the derivative, antiderivative of negative x or 3x or something. It's just a, remember the constant is just comes out. Sine y is just going to be treated as a constant with respect to x. Um, then you take the antiderivative of that again, or no, once you evaluate it, so this is the evaluated, 
Um, and then you take the antiderivative again. But first, I brought out the constant to make it easier to simplify. I don't have to do it, but I prefer to. Um, and then the antiderivative of sine y is negative cosine y. And then you're evaluating that from 0 to pi over 2. And then multiply that by uh, the constant. And using the fundamental theorem of calculus, you get 0 minus minus negative 1. Or 0 minus negative 1, which is simply 1. And 1 times negative pi squared over 8 is simply negative pi squared over 8. So... Uh, what does that mean? Well, that means that something is flowing out of the system, meaning since it's a negative number, if that was positive pi squared over 8, it would be flowing into. So that's pretty much the difference, and here's a basic example on how to calculate circulation and flux using Green's theorem.